firstly, what prompted the writing of this book? Well, just the world you described. I mean, that's my world. That's my granddaughter's world. That's my family's world. Uh, I'm a principal of a theological college. And the other day, I mean, outside my library, my Bible college, there were people doing Tai Chi. And then someone comes in with a prayer mat and starts you know, praying to Allah. I mean, our world interacts with spirituality all around it. You know, it rubs against us. And often it's the Eastern forms of spirituality like yoga, Tai Chi, mindfulness with Buddhist roots. It's that kind of yoga, we can't, that kind of spirituality, we can't escape in the workplace, the school. And should we escape it? And what do you do if someone wants to rent your hall? So, you know, we're not talking about it, Claire. We talk about a lot of things, but the things that it actually interact with our lives. Mm. Uh, in your book, you make the point that in Western nations like Australia, so society is becoming less Christian, but we aren't actually becoming less spiritual as a nation, are we? No, we're not. And I think that's really true. We just noted in the book, you know, when Philip Hughes, that great Australian cricketer, died that tragic death, hit with a cricket ball at the SCG. I mean, what did all the Australian players do when cricket got going again and they scored 100 runs or whether, whatever, whether it be the captain, Michael Clarke, or the opening bat, David Warner? You know, they raised their bat in the air and said, mm. you know, Michael, you know, um, Philip, this was for you. And everyone said our thoughts and prayers are with uh, Philip Hughes and his family. I mean, you now deep down, Australians are still spiritual, but they do not connect with the institutions as much. And the institutions they see being the church, for example. Mm. And you do make that observation in your book that, um, for example, we see the growth of Pentecostal and charismatic movements mm. in the church um, and this extra spirituality in our society that we're seeing, it shows that people are really seeking something very tangible um, mm. from God. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they're looking to nine to five kind of spirituality, thing that connects, uh, makes their life more meaningful, helps them through the day. So that's what mindfulness does. You know, I had a couple of uh, young uh, school students talk to me about uh, mindfulness in year 12. You know, their parents were concerned about it because of its Buddhist roots. It's compulsory in, in their school program. What do we do for mi about mindfulness? So we talked through the strengths and weaknesses of mindfulness. But then they said, look, it's really assisting us to detach. It's assisting us to find space, to understand what's happening to us emotionally. And so, you know, mindfulness was playing a part in their life. So you say, oh, I'm going to remove mindfulness from them. Well, what are you going to replace it with? Or do you need to look at mindfulness and actually ask, is this program that's almost universal now in schools and marketing and everything else, does it have a base that Christians can build on, that Christians can use, can Christianise, if you like? That's the question about mindfulness. And it needs to be addressed because people are involved in it. Yeah. So before we get into some of the specific topics, uh, I think that some people might approach this book looking for a declaration, perhaps at the end of each chapter, saying this practice is good yeah. or bad. But you really don't do that no. in your book. How do you address each of the issues? We address each of the issues by telling you the origin of the issue. Uh, normally, it's coming from an Eastern religious background, its origin. Uh, we talk about, you know, its development, where you can find contact with it. We have a discernment section where we talk about, well, what are some of the spiritual issues you should be looking at and be, being considering as you're looking at this practice or being involved in the practice. We have case studies from England, America, Australia, with churches mainly that are missional, engaging through yoga or Tai Chi, and sometimes case studies where they're acting against it, helping you make up your own mind and your own situation, and your own culture. Uh, we want to be biblical, but we want you to work through the issues and understand that often, Claire, the practitioner is really key. So in one situation, you might have a practitioner who's clearly linking you with an Eastern faith where you'd say, hey, you've got to be cautious there. But you might have another practitioner who's got no uh, visible or other connection with any kind of Eastern or spiritual tradition. And you think, well, are these the same two practices? Does that make sense? Mm. Or you might actually have someone who's actually doing this from a Christian perspective, like holy yoga. Then you've got to ask, OK, holy yoga, should I be involved in that? Because, you know, we want to be physical and bodily in the way we express our faith before God. And that's what people are seeking today, a very holistic spirituality, not just sort of a cramped spirituality, but one that engages God in all of our, all of our body, all of our being.